welcome to another session of neighborhood training. A training session in which we take neighborhoods within Falmouth and focus on the different aspects of the neighborhood. Hopefully we'll get to learn some of the roads, some of the buildings in the area. This week we're going to uh, break out the Plum Hollow in Edmar Village areas of East Falmouth, right off of 151 and Old Bicycle Road. Um, these areas, just like the uh, Schumann Valley and the Kunamesa Crossing, areas that we've done previously are distant from any of the stations. We do also get automatic line response from Mashpee for Priority 1s, 2s, and building fires. We will all look at the distance from the fire stations, we'll look at the distance from Mashpee as well, and do some uh, approximate uh, time travel for us so we have an idea of what we're looking at as far as fires and rescues. Uh, both of these neighborhoods uh, are all single family dwellings, Plum Hollow and Edmar. They do share some unique uh, characteristics, which we'll point out as we go along um, and we'll be able to gain something out of this training today and look forward to hearing some uh, constructive comments and areas that we can go to, to make this a better session for everyone. All right, thank you. Here we go. Okay, well there's the entrance to Plum Hollow right across from the Bosville County Fairgrounds. Uh, many of you probably have driven by and, and seen it a million times. Um, as well as Edmar Village, which is right next to it. Uh, the entrance to Edmar Village is Doran Drive, and the entrance to Plum Hollow is Plum Hollow Road. These are both off of Route 151. But you can access them, and we will be accessing them from Old Barnstable Road uh, primarily uh, for the first responding units. Mashpee will be coming in off of 151, so your dispatchers that are. Uh, watching this session as well. Keep that in mind that our apparatus may be coming from different directions. So we'll have to focus on that. Um, I'm just going to briefly go over some of the features within uh, both of these developments. They're very, very similar. Building construction is very similar. Here we have um, one house that looks fairly new, right within um, the neighborhood. Obviously, it is fairly new, um, and it does have a basement, air conditioner, and I believe these neighborhoods also have gas as well. So um, that's just one focus there. But they also, one of the things that they, sh they share is that both of these developments were built in the uh, late 60s and early 70s. And both of these developments feature buildings like this. And you'll see primarily ranches. I mean, excuse me, you'll see primarily capes we'll see uh, primarily capes built of this nature. There are two or three ranches built similar to this. And the um, unique feature of this is that this is a small cape, probably 600 uh, to 800 square foot. It's predominant in this neighborhood. Very easy to recognize. Uh, one of the things 
that you'll see is the same building design with this long gable roof in the front, very low slung house. But one thing that's very unique, and if you look carefully during the fire, we'll be able to get a uh, size up and to get some building construction information. This structure, many of them in both of those developments, are built on a slab. There's no foundation on these type of structures. Not all the structures in the developments are like this, but you'll see many of these houses like this in this development, and it's good knowledge for us to know. You'll see along here, there's no basement windows, no basement windows along the front. Also, the siding comes very close to the ground. That's one of the unique features that you'll be able to tell um, on these capes. So they are built in the slab, which is a good thing because we're not going to have a floor collapse on us as we go in. And we will not be dealing with any cellar fires with this type of building. However, all the utilities in the furnace is all on the first floor. So as you can imagine, mixing the heating plant living and sleeping areas within a small structure like this present some hazards in and of themselves. Uh, some of these buildings have been renovated and rehabilitated over the years, uh, over the last 38 years or so, and they will be barely recognizable. If you look at them closely, you'll be able to still see their features. A lot of folks have, have um, added a garage to them or breezeway or added dormers on the second floor. But um, you'll still see many of the original houses like this in there. Um, but that is just one of the things I wanted to point out. A unique structure. Um, I also wanted to point out this um, house here, which I thought was pretty unique, but well, not very unique, because probably throughout Falmouth we'll see buildings like this, and, and you have. And with our size up, what is this going to tell you right off the bat? Pretty obvious that someone in this building is in a wheelchair. And it's a pretty extensive a ramp system. They actually have two means of egress with the ramps. They have the ramp coming out the front door and then this ramp here actually comes up the side of the building and uh, comes out of the bedroom. So for uh, rescue, we know that we're going to have a person that's incapacitated inside this house. We're probably also going to have a caregiver in there as well. Uh, it does inhibit us somewhat with uh, advancing a line into the building and also rescuing the occupants. We're going to be doing the, uh, we'll be running the lines up and trying to rescue at the same time. Luckily, this is a relatively small ranch. But just something to point out as we're looking through and we're, we're seeing um, places that have found it, just to keep in mind. Um, just a quick note, um, see this air conditioner on the left hand side, obviously it's pretty easy to to vent this place or to open up and do a quick search, you just pop that air conditioner out and the windows are already up. And you can just pop right in. Uh, this is uh, a pretty, this is a very unique structure. It's um, the first house on the right as you go in Plum Hollow from 151. And as you can see, it's pretty substantial. Um, I'm guessing probably. 1,500, 2,000 square foot, probably contemporary style home. This is the largest uh, dwelling within both of those developments, and this is, is very new, but just something I wanted to point out as well. Um, features we have here is uh, all of these pipe chases for all the heating and the fireplace that they have inside is a building construction wise it's going to be a void space right in there just holding those pipes in there 
so we'll have to watch out for that. Two car garage right on the first level. And who knows where the bedrooms are within this building. Uh, I'm not sure, but I would say this area here is probably these folks' main entry in and out. It's probably into a kitchen or a mudroom area. Um, these windows obviously look like they're from the garage. So probably bedrooms on the second floor. I would surmise there's also some bedrooms right on the first floor. But just something to keep in mind, this is much larger compared to that other small cave. And um, this would have, uh, I would guess that this would have a full basement, in it, unlike the others. Um, that just kind of touches on those a little bit. Um, let's just uh, fly down to, um, let's see if we can fly down to Fletcher Lane. know the roads within these developments. Obviously that's uh, Fletcher right in there. Let's zoom in briefly here. So that is uh, Fletcher Lane right there. As you can see there's only a few houses on it. as well that right across the street is uh, Fellow Lane. Comes right off of Old Barnstable. Old Barnstable is down over here and Fellow comes up here. Interesting thing uh, as we'll go through, it doesn't appear to be any house addresses or house numbered, houses numbered on Fellow Lane. So it appears to be an access road until we get to Fletcher. Um, I wanted to point that out because um, if we go from East Falmouth uh, Station to uh, Fletcher Lane, you should see, okay, sorry about that. Um, in a few more. Um, we'll see that it's a significant distance from uh, Station 5. As you'll see, we'll be traveling through Crocker Road and up to Old Barnstable until we get the fellow. But the thing I wanted to point out here is really um, the distance is uh, 3.1 miles uh, from Station 5, which doesn't seem like that far away until you drive in on an average probably about 30 miles an hour says there nine minutes I would hope it doesn't take us nine minutes to get out there but that might be might be uh, in the ballpark considering the dispatch time and our turnout time and our travel time so perhaps from the time of dispatch to the time that we get there we might be looking at nine minutes uh, we'll definitely be looking at six that's for sure so it's you know, something to keep in mind as we're we're going through. And, uh, Station 5 will be the first units out there. Uh, Mashby. Mashby will probably get there at the same time that we do. Um, uh, spell it right. Wouldn't that be nice? Okay, sorry about that. Um, but Mashby is uh, is 2.6 miles. So with the time that it takes us to 
to dispatch Mashpee um, and have those folks get out there. We're probably going to be arriving at the same time. Probably going to be arriving uh, in eight minutes. Um, obviously, from from headquarters and any other part of town, even from North Falmouth, you're talking a significant drive. You know, we're probably uh, you know headquarters is probably seven to nine miles from there, so. You know, we still got a uh, significant drive, but uh, I guess the important point is for a few folks in East Falmouth that uh, may actually be arriving at approximately the same time that we are. And the other point is for the dispatchers to remember that it's these units are going to have a long drive out there and some of the travel distances, um, or, or the actual directions to the um, incident there at Fletcher or any place within these developments, Mashpee's going to come down 151 and um, Station 5 is going to be coming over by Silver Road. So I don't want to belabor that anymore, but um, we'll just go in and take a quick look at this development uh, and see how it's all uh, lined up. Yeah, we come in. Let me get rid of this. Uh, okay. So our main access points are going to be uh, right at Plum Hollow and 151 is going to be our primary um, access from Ashby to get into Plum Hollow and also into the Edmire development. Uh, the primary road off 151 is Duran Drive. But as we go in, I want to focus uh, basically the way we will be arriving there seems pretty straightforward coming off Route 151 of how to get into these developments but when you come off Old Barnstable we're talking a little different story so that's where the dispatchers and everybody else um, really have to be paying a little bit of attention here we have three four different uh, roads here that access different parts of both developments. Here uh, we have Plum Hollow Road, which is the main road coming in from 151 that is right off of Old Barnstable Road here. And this, we uh, go down the Pinehurst, we're going to end up into a, into a cul-de-sac, but if you do take it, you can always backtrack over this and get get into there. Um, and that's in the Plum Hollow. And now into Edmar, there's two ways into Edmar from Old Barnstable. Feller is the most direct route into uh, the Edmar development. But there was uh, two distinct developments coming off of Old Barnstable Road. And that's important to remember. Even though they're connected and even though they're very similar, um, when you come off of Old Barnstable, you gotta grab uh, Plum Hollow or uh, to get into Plum Hollow development or Compass and Fellow to get into Edmar. As they come up, I also want to point out that they are connected by these little power line shortcuts. It can be a little confusing here, but as we'll see there, um, we can scoot across from one development to the other. This is uh, Plum Hollow and Twin Hill in the uh, Plum Hollow development. 
and shooting across here to uh, Duran Drive, and then you can go across this little dirt section here to Edmar. So it just gets a little confusing as we're, as we're moving our way through. Uh, but it's just to be aware that we can go from one development to the other. Um, so anyway, we'll come in. Uh, if we look at the main entrance from 151, come up, boom, Plum Hollow is over, runs this length all the way to Old Barnstable, and Twin Hill uh, goes to the left and proceeds down parallel to Plum Hollow and then meets up with it down here and ends up coming out on uh, Old Barnstable. So that's uh, important to know. And I also wanted to mention that, um, remember I mentioned that Cape style house uh, with the on the slab construction. You'll find those houses as well on Old Barnstable Road, right in the area of Plum Hollow in the COVID landing developments. But primarily along this section of Old Barnstable, you'll, you'll see those uh, capes as well. Just, it's not just in the developments there. So we have Pinehurst, is another, um, another major road as we go through, but it is just a cul-de-sac, so we don't want to get uh, tricked up into that. Um, and uh, the other thing I want to point out coming off Old Barnesville getting into the Edmar is this uh, Compass Drive. We want to make sure that we don't make the mistake, um, don't get the confusion. This is Compass Drive with a K, Compass Circle is elsewhere in town, down in Pinecrest, so we want to make sure that the dispatchers are paying attention to when these callers um, are saying that they're at, and we want to, whether it's Compass Circle or Compass Drive, makes a big difference. Uh, oh, sorry about that. Now, as I mentioned before, this is Fletcher and uh, Edmar. Now, Compass is a pretty long road. Compass runs all the way up along this back section here and then meets up with um, the entrance to Edmar up over here. Um, and I just want to point out that uh, Duran is, is a dead end. If you follow it all the way down the end, Duran is going to run into, uh, into being a dead end. So we don't want to get too messed up with that as we're going through there. And the rams right down there runs up to a dead end, and uh, we want to make sure that we get on the right path as we're going through. So, all right. So we come in. Uh, if we come in off 151, there's Duran Drive runs up to be. A dead end compass comes around here. This could be a little confusing right in here. Um, I'm not sure. Years ago, there wasn't too many signs up there. Now, hopefully, there, there's a few signs. And we come up and we're looking at uh, Fletcher down over here. And then Cast Tree. Let's see. Um, sort of bring up the just a little other section uh, detail on the uh, town GIS and I want to point out that we do have um, hydrants throughout this uh, development 
10, 15 years ago we didn't, and this is a large area of Falmouth that uh, did not have water. But as you can see now, the hydrants are about 500 feet apart. Uh, we will point out while we're right here that this whole section of Courier Road and where uh, does not have hydrants up by Cape Woods Drive um, does not have hydrants. It's a pretty long section of the road and uh, we will be concentrating on that at some point. We're going to be looking at the different areas of town that do not have town water that are significant ways away. Um, and we're also going to be looking at this development over here, the Cogan Landing development. But for right now, I just wanted to point out that we do have significant hydrants in both Edmire and Plum Hollow that are um, good hydrants, so in a good water system there. Um, so yeah. a dispatch map here. I want to point out again. There's our entrance. There's our Plum Hollow entrance here. And uh, we just lost more right in there, which is a little line, uh, which is our crossover road. But let's not get too tied up with that. We're going Plum Hollow, we're going to go straight in. But if we do uh, miss Plum Hollow, we can go in Pinehurst and take a left on the Flossmoor and get us into that development. Um, we'll do that right now. Sorry about that. Here we go, right? Plum Hollow, we're coming down Old Barn School from Station 5, or from Headquarters. We're going to be coming down Old Barn School and connecting up, right? Our first road on the left is Plum Hollow. And then we have Pinehurst, is right here. And Flossmoor, cutting across. Get a look at up here. We got this, uh, this break out over in here, which is something that's important to know. All right, there's Plum Hollow in Twin Hill. Plum Hollow is going to take to the left, Twin Hill takes to the right, and we end up um, going down. Take Twin Hill, we end up going down um, the entrance to Plum Hollow. And uh, as we come in through here, just try to zoom in a little bit better. I know the last few sessions here we didn't have great graphics and I wanted to try and improve that, but we're, we're getting there anyway. I'm trying to pay attention a little bit more to focusing into what we're doing. So there's uh, it's Compass with a K off of well, Barnstable. And then uh, Fella. This can be a little confusing, this section here when you come up. Edmire, Fletcher, and Fella. So we do want to make sure that we pay attention because uh, Compass is going to keep right on going right back around to uh, 151 and uh, Edmar really is only, even though it's Edmar development, it's really only a small, relatively small uh, road as we go 
Club from Cash Tree. This is, this is Ed Bar right in here. Um, and Compass is going to go back in. This area here, once again, can be a little... I'm not sure if, this, if the signage here is that great. We're at this intersection here, so we want to make sure that we know, you know what we're dealing with and uh, looking at our house numbers. Uh, that's one thing I want to point out is uh, looking at our, our way our house numbers are going. Compass is going to be obviously uh, they're coming from 151 and increasing up. Same thing with Edmar. look we'll also see that Plum Hollow does the same thing the numbers increase as they come off of 151 so that's a good thing to know but it's not working yet but let's see I'm a little slow here okay so there's our uh, here's what we're looking at anyway as far as seeing our number of progressions, which is important for us to know. We should have some idea of which way these numbers are going to progress down some of these major roads in Falmouth. So, um, that's what we're looking at here, fully, uh, fully hygienic areas. Let's look at this map here and we'll show us a little bit better that the Plum Hollow numbers obviously the progress up from 151. So if we come in off Old Barnstable, we're going to be hitting the high numbers. And the same thing uh, coming down Twin Hill, not Twin Oaks. Hope everybody knows what Twin Oaks is, right? So it's Twin Hill. Same thing, the numbers are progressing up. And it seems as though everything all of the numbers progress in that way, except for um, anything that's coming off of the short roads that come off of Old Barnstable, like uh, Pinehurst here, obviously the, the numbers kind of progress as they come off of uh, Pinehurst and Flossmore seem to both do that as well. But for the main roads and the development, that's what we're looking at. And the mention is uh, Fella right over here, and we're, we're seeing no numbers that are on Fella. But then um, over here, we're seeing the numbers go up. So this is Fletcher down here, right? And then uh, Flossmore. Correct. Yeah. Feller, Feller and Fletcher. And this is Flossmore over here. Correct myself here. That's what we're looking at, right? Yeah. Flossmore and Fletcher and Feller. Um, let's let that load up here a minute. I, I don't recall any. We've had a few bedroom fires on houses that are right on Old Barnstable Road. And we, we have many, obviously, many calls out there, many uh, rescue calls. And many, we haven't had too many actual building fires out there, but um, we have to, obviously, it doesn't matter if we have one out there or we, have, we don't have any. We want to make sure it's our job to know where we're going and how we're going to get there. And without counting uh, how many houses are in this area here, but uh, pretty close to saying there's at least a good 100, 150 houses out there. So we're probably talking good neighbors, uh, probably about 300 of our neighbors live out there. And also i uh, mentioned too that the houses here are spaced well enough apart. As you can see, they're, they're, um, they're spaced well enough apart. I mean, we got a good 50 feet or so between the houses. So the chances of the fire 
uh, spreading from one dwelling to another are uh, going to be kind of rare and it doesn't seem to be a lot of these uh, folks don't have anybody right in their backyard either so you know we also just have to keep in uh, keep in mind if we do have any brush incidents out in this area um, that you know we could have a little wild land urban interface in this area there's a lot of uh, a lot of scrub out there and it does take us a while to get out there uh, as you can see just just looking around here as far as the brush is concerned um, we are pretty flat area this area here um, that we're now in the Currier Road area um, so we're going to begin to see this section here have a little bit of a rise to it until we get um, up to this uh, flat area here. I mentioned this all Plum Hollow's got hydrants in it but these folks over in Cape Woods where Captain Small lives there's no hydrants in there so um, they can probably look right through the back window and see a fire hydrant but they don't have one yet. So I just want to point out a few just in uh, summarizing we'll take a little distant view here and just to summarize um, 151 coming in is Plum Hollow Road here in Duran Drive, the entrance to Edmar. Uh, we will be, our units from East Falmouth and uh, headquarters are going to be arriving down here, down Old Barnstable Road. But um, our automatic line response from Ashby is going to be coming down 151. Looking at the travel times and the distances, it's a pretty good bet that Mashby is going to get there at the same time that we do, which is going to be a good help because we'll have two fire crews, you know, we're able to go right to work or two rescue crews getting there. It still is going to take both uh, units, Falmouth and Mashby, it's going to take a good six to eight minutes to, uh, to get out there. So we have to uh, pay attention to our time to flash over on a uh, fire and our survival times for um, cardiac arrest uh, so some of the roads we have in there right Plum Hollow the entrance uh, right off 151 to Old Barnstable which way do the numbers go the numbers come in from 151 and progress up so these down in here are going to be the higher numbers Pinehurst, these are the low numbers here. They're going to be going higher up there because it comes right off Old Barnstable. It's a short road coming off Old Barnstable, and uh, then the numbers are going to progress up from Old Barnstable. But if the, the road, uh, we can say the road starts at 151, and wherever the road starts is where the numbers progress up from. You can all argue about where the road starts, but anyway, that's where we're going. With that, um, Flossmore is here, crosses over from Pinehurst, Fletcher, and Fella, Compass with a K, uh, Dorian Drive, and what, what's this name of this road right here? Cast Tree. All right, Cast Tree is right there. I'm going to see in and we do have these crossovers in the developments so just keep that in mind as we're uh, working our way through some of the neighborhoods I say I don't find this to be as confusing as the Schumann Valley but um, I think that the areas um, particularly in here can be confusing as you come in um, this becomes Edmar and this is Compass and Castry it can be uh, a little confusing because the street signs will probably be sparse in this development um, this is where the very large house is that I showed you right from the uh, beginning and the uh, house with the ramps uh, on the front of it are right down this corner here right off of uh, 
So, just wrap that up briefly, right? So, once again, thank you all for putting up with some of the graphics that uh, we're working with here at the moment. We are going to try and improve that. And I would suggest that you go to your uh, map books and uh, take a closer look. Or you can also obviously look up the same things that I'm looking up here and to get some more detail on this development in here. And it is fully hydrated. So we're in good shape as far as water is concerned. Um, keep an eye out for those small capes and also there's a couple of small ranches out there that are built on the slabs. If you drive through the neighborhood, you'll be able to pick those up pretty quickly. You know, once you see one or two of them, you'll, you'll know what I'm talking about out there. Um, so that's about it. We'll wrap that up. Uh, thank you very much for working with us here and next week we are uh, going to spend some time in this uh, COVID landing development down here. So we'll try to work our way into that as well. All right. Thank you very much.